Hej, så vi er væk. Han er efter måske at finde. Vi har det skæmme lidt nemt betydet dropt. Der er ikke nogen sektor eller sådan noget. Åh ja, så må du også sige, at jeg er hæsset eller så. Det er det, der kan blive bare et projekt. Det er for at kan blive sådan noget bare for at skæmme lidt rigtigt. Så anyway, hvad der man tror det er måske lidt dato. We are here. Så en kæmme lidt rigtigt kan blive sådan noget. Kan blive kæmme lidt strings eller string. Fairing, tariban. Tab over. Can we call him? Ah, the crawl strings. Far, far away. Ah, equal. Bom, 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 bom. All right. So now we have a multi-line string. And then we need a couple more quotation marks here. Close that out. And so this is our variable rock crawl. And it is a multi-line string. And we can print this out. We can say print. Skip, skip, skip. We can say. Raw crawl. And we see here that it's printed out here, but um, it's kind of ugly. We got all this uh, weird spacing and indentation, right? Um, so we can fix that by saying yeah, that trim margin. Access. And so what this is going to do is it's going to um, automatically um, get rid of all of this white space in front of our lines. But we have to um, provide it a, an indicator of where we want it to. Shift and so the default is a pipe. Okay, so if we put a pipe at the beginning of each of our lines. And then run it. Adjusted um, for our uh, for our lines, and I said so. This is the default, the pipe. Um, you could um, put okay. in, you know, something else, maybe like a angle. Right? <coughs> so do that here on all of them. Oops. Put the angle to be to be the pipeline. And then we our pipe. Mesh. Oh, I think I need to uh, put this in quotation marks, and it's going to say margin prefix. Then we can put in um, what we just uh, set our. Um, uh, limiter margin prefix too. I'm gonna hold up the hand there. And that's gonna work uh, the exact same way. I'll usually just stick with the default pipes, so command Z. Uh, and that is the um, strings. Raw strings. Terms right. of conditions so, or so. Uh, I, I talked about how, the, how strings are um, a collection of characters, and in Kotlin you can actually uh, loop over them um, by the bytes index. Okay, You can say something like for, and then I'm gonna say care for character in, and then I'm gonna say string. And then I'm going to say open and close curly brace. And so this is a for loop. We haven't talked about this yet, um, but we will. All right, so don't worry too much about it right now. Basically, all we're saying is um, we're looping over the string, and each one of these is represented by by a character as we loop through. So and the first time we go through, the first character is M, the second is A, third is Y, fourth is a space, so forth. OK, so each time we loop through, through we're going to say print line, and we're going to print out care for character. OK, I'm going to run that. And here we go. Each character is printed out on a new line. All right, so that's pretty cool, uh, and it can be very useful um, in, in many applications where we need to um, work with a string based on um, index numbers and looking at uh, specific parts of the string. All right, um, but because this takes up a lot of space, I'm going to delete it. Actually, I'll just comment it out. Um, so to comment out several lines of code with just a shortcut key. You can do you can say command slash. Exit code zero Um, open AVD Manager. Seen the run of the run. Hell, the Munkin. A Munkin. I'll be hard on him at any hour. أنا محتاج أقول له باور. سكرين شوت فيلد. يا. مش مطرن ليه يا ابني ما انت كنت شغال قبل كده اللي في دي رننج يعني طيب خلاص خليك دلوقتي كمل alright so now let's look at some useful uh, methods that we can use with our string alright so one useful thing that you can do is you can compare different strings and see whether or not they are حلو ده so you can say uh, string dot content equals خلينا نكريت سترينج ده بس عشان هو نكريته عنده فيبقى معانا عشان ما نتعبش 
equal may the force be with you bra wonder if it's semicolon قاتل and then you can um pass into it a a sequence of characters and so we can say here we can say may the force be with you okay and then one thing i like with um the compiler is all we did was we did just the string and then the method um but what it's going to do here is if we click on this it's going to say introduce a local variable and if we do that then we can um then it'll give us a few options for um setting a, a variable all right so i'm going to say content equals so now all we did was this, and the compiler said you probably want that to be assigned to a variable here's uh, a few options that you can use and then uh, then it sets it to us then we can say, okay, say content equals and let's go ahead and run that i will look through and it is going to pass us a um, boolean result of true or false. So we are, we now know that this string is equal to this string, that the contents are equal. But if I get rid of one letter and rerun it, now it should return false. Yep. All right. So that's pretty. That can be uh, very useful. Another okay. um, very useful one is to detect whether um, one string um, contains, or if any part of that string contains a, a different string. All right. So we can say val. <laughs> Expecting an expression. Expression I am. Now, if str dot content equals Karim, do shit. Ah, the mental, the mental is a follow. Which type? Vale. Str dot contents. Um, let's see here. Contains. I'm gonna create half. Uh, and I'm we gonna get uh, that sequence. So we're gonna say um, is uh, course is equal. Here. And then you'll see here that uh, we have a couple of um, parameters here. We can pass into it a string, and then we need to also specify Quince. whether or not it ignores case, meaning uppercase or lowercase. And we can pass that in via a Boolean, true or false. Quince. So I do want to ignore um, case, so I'm going to say true. Okay. And then we're going to print this now. Uh, true, and but the ignore case. Contains, and this is going to be uh, true or false based on whether or not this string, force, exists inside of this string. May the force be with you. And we can see that it does force and. Oh, let me D, uh, equal string. Equal str dot content equals cream true or imitelli and to try to try to extension function string the content equals wow pam yell del str but i ah mm-hmm what up String that contains that contains contains the layer. Okay, but I'm not going to write content equals. Why am I not going to write content equals? Or to say true. Ah, okay. I'm going to write this as a function. I'm going to write this as a function. Okay. So this should evaluate to true. So I'm going to run this. And here we can see that indeed um, that this evaluates to true because we can see that force does exist here in force. Um, but what if we change this to false? So now it's not going to ignore case. And then we change this to an uppercase F. So now it's going to take this string and it's going to look inside of this string and see if, um, see if this exists in here. But it's not going to ignore the fact that this uppercase, that this force is uppercase F. So if I run this now, then we should get false. And there we do go. We do get false indeed. All right. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple. Um, another, um, some other good ones are um, val upper. We'll say val uppercase is equal to str dot, and you can say um, to uppercase. And then you can also say val lower, and you can say is equal to string dot uh, to lowercase. To upper. And so what that's going to do is that's just going to um, set the uh, string to all upper or all lowercase. And we can see that if we go print line and we say um, upper case. And print line, and we do a lower. Okay, and then I'm gonna run this control shift R. Okay. All right, there we go. You can see that this one's all uppercase, and this one is all lowercase. All right, and uh, then we can do even conversions of numbers to strings, mm. like we were talking about in the last one. So if I say here val num is is equal to six, and then we say uh, val string num is equal to num dot to string, and then we say print line, and we say string num, hmm. and we run that. Yeah, but so what I mean, I'm not a string on of string character. String dot value of the machine. So that's, a, that's pretty cool. And then the last element that I want to show you is um, called uh, subsequence, right? And so what it's going to do is we're going to start out with a string, 
and we're able to supply a start index and an end mm. index, and it's going to um, get only, it's going to return only what is between the two. Right? So if we say here, let's say this is so zero, one, two, three, four. So we start at four and we go to five, six, seven, eight, Three. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, um, I already forgot it. What was it? Four to thirteen. I think. <laughs> All right. So four to thirteen. Um, we're going to say val um, sub sequence is equal to, and we're going to say string uh, dot sub sequence. And we need to, you can see here that we need to pass in start index and end index. So I'm going to say 4, comma, 13. Okay, and then we're going to print out subsequence, sub, whoops, the value out, uh, sub string. Index, subsequence. And we run this. There we go. And so what is returned is only the force. All right, right. so this can be uh, very useful when um, you know you have a string and you only need part of it, and you know that it's always Range. going to um, be given that same um, number of characters. You can just um, programmatically oh, specify yeah. each part of that string that you're going to want. All right, and so that. Now, let's see. 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 Let's Delimiter value, delimiter value. I really don't know. Give the whole data. Or any multiple implementations of data. The whole missing delimiter value. I'm not sure if they have some issue. Okay. I'm not sure if you will be able to do it. As a substring before, of course. Before last, we are in a high guy, any Gamila. Before last, because I think in the deeper to the higher, the substring. قبل او بعد آه اخر اس في السترنج يعني لسه انك انت مثلا عندك كريم از آه سوبر ساين فساعتها هو سب سترنج قبل الاس بتاعت الساين مثلا مثلا ويتش از جميل هل انا سوبر ساين فعلا ده سؤال مهم جدا يلا كمل يا حاج كفرز سم اوف ذا مور يوسفول اند common um, methods that we're able to use with strings. And the last thing that I want to do that I've been uh, waiting to show you about is something called string templates. All right. So in our variables, um, we were looking at this, right? We had is plus name plus awesome. So this was the old way of having to work with strings and variables. All right. So let me show you how we can do this in Kotlin now. All right. So here in strings, um, let's go ahead and create a few variables here. We're going to say val Luke is equal to, this is a string Luke Skywalker. And we're going to say val um, light saber color is equal to green and we're going to say val vehicle is equal to land speeder okay so the old way um, we're going to say luke skywalker has a green lightsaber and drives a land speeder all right so let's do that the old way again so we're going to have to say print um, li let's say print line so we're going to say luke the variable plus a string space has a and then we got to do plus light Save our color, and we would just have to keep doing it like that. Kind of a pain. Oh, it's a huge pain having to do having to do this. But the new way, using what's called string templates, yeah, the awesome. huge pain we can insert directly into a string. The I'm stuck on how to keep up Mac. Val uh, name equal Karim. Val name uh, Val height. Uh, equal uh, 20 then uh, weight equal <laughs> cd 91 as a mobile collective semicolons oh well can be able to do and i can tell them a big time in the string equal chance of me compiled string i had a equal liquid time as a man and i can tell um uh, 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 my name is plus Karim plus oh, oh uh, plus name plus uh, and I am uh, twenty uh, meters long. I hack. I can. For one day, Mustafa is going to have to tell you. Convert concatenation to template. Help me make it one at a time. The variable of the value of a variable. All right. So what we can do, how we do that, is we say dollar sign Luke. Oh. A dollar sign light saber color. That's sexy. Light saber. And that's so sexy. Goddamn. A dollar sign land speeder. 
Yes, the lamb. Uh, oh, vehicle. That's what it is. The last time, vehicle. Alright. Shit, that's cool. Okay. Uh, well, well, compiled uh, string uh, with Kotlin. I use dollar sign. With dollar sign. Dollar sign. Dollar. With dollar. Mohammy uh, Ani. Hat all. Name. Oh, okay, kiddo. Actually. My name is dollar sign. Name. Dollar sign. Ah. Name and Nila is name and I am uh, dollar sign twenty. How oh, limit I? Um, uh, twenty uh, height meters long, and I am uh, die away, masalan, uh, ninety one. Kilograms. Ah, yeah, he bad. Just get all. Wait. Wait. 21 kilograms. Holy shit, that's sexy. The Camille get then. Okay. And that is it. Type swell. Hello, I'm about to tell you that I can handle her. Yes, can handle her. Yes, can handle her. That's actually cool. Let's so run that. And there we go, Luke Skywalker has a green lightsaber and drives a land speeder. And it's so much easier than having to so much easier to between pluses and variables and quotation marks. You just put it all right here and you um, denote that um, it's going to interpolate the value of this um, variable's value into a string right here. But and it doesn't even have to be strings. Um, we could add something here like um, val age is equal to uh, 27. And we could say and is dollar sign age <laughs> and is is old. And we can run that. And it uh, interpolates that value, which is an integer, into a string. So that's fantastic. That's a, that's a great feature um, for Kotlin. That it's Java an awesome feature, Sarah. And another yes. cool thing is that you can actually use um, methods from uh, these these variables. So for methods. instance, we can say print line, mm -hmm. and we can say uh, something like Luke's full name is, and then dollar sign Luke. So now we're just that's the same that we've been doing using the variable, and then we can say has, and if we want to get the number of um, of characters in his oh. name, um, you would do something like. Uh, dot count, all right, or dot length, and so we can do that here. We can say, inside of these curly braces, you're able to use um, the functions, the, the variables. Okay. So we can say, uh, compile this dollar fifty one. Uh, my name is my name, and uh, it has no dollar sign. I mean brackets. Uh, name dot uh, length uh, characters. Oh my god, that's uh, so cool. Dot length. length. Right? And so this is another um, method, just like some of these other ones that we've been using, that is able to return the number of characters in a string. All right. So if we run this, now we have Luke's full name. Luke Skywalker has fourteen. I forgot to uh, finish this off. I say characters. All right, and you can you can do that with um, with anything that will return something that can be interpolated to a string. Uh, so for instance, some of these other ones that we did, we said um, like uppercase. You know, we could we just put right here uppercase to uppercase. Wow. And instead of fourteen right here, it's going to return Luke Skywalker, but all in. You have to okay, understand so, uh, the super, um, uh, perspective of the Android developer. I mean, I've been Java for years. This is so fucking good. <laughs> so fucking good. And um, nice things that Colin has built into strings for us to be able to use. And yeah, so uh, hopefully we were able to understand um, how strings work and how we can use some of these methods to our um, great benefit. Um, we went over several methods. We talked about um, escape strings, raw strings, um, these different methods that, we are, that we're going to be using a lot. And what I think most importantly is um, the string templates. Being able to directly interpolate to string values inside of a string is super helpful. Um, if you're familiar with PHP at all, this is uh, probably very familiar to you um, using this dollar sign annotation here. All right, so um, hope you guys are having fun. And I'm going to see you in the next lesson where we continue to learn about the basics of Colin, all right? Yeah. Next lesson, yeah. Next lesson numbers. Number one. Number one. Number one. Everyone, welcome back to class. Johnny B here with DevSlopes.com, and in this lesson, uh, it's going to be a, a quick one. Um, we're just going to talk about numbers and operators real quick. So right here, we're going to uh, right-click on the source folder and say new. Kotlin file class. Mm, we're going to call this number. Right? Okay. Then we're going to uh, put in our main function. 
And uh, so this is gonna be a quick one. We're just gonna talk about um, numbers and operators. Uh, operators being the math operators, right? So we've done already kind of talked a little bit about how we can use um, variables to hold numbers and do a little bit of math with them. So let's go ahead and create a couple of variables here. So we're gonna say val a is equal to 12, val um, b is equal to 25.3, okay? So uh, via type inference, a is going to be of type int and b is going to be of type double. All right, and so let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of uh, math here. All right, so the, the uh, operators that are available to us, um, the main ones are, of course, plus, plus subtraction, uh, division, uh, multiplication. And uh, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but just to uh, for completeness sake, we're going to go through a little bit here. So we're going to say, and I'll just do a print line. And so we can say b plus a. And so there's our addition. We can say print a plus b. Um, print line. Um, B minus A. Minus line. divide so we can do, multiply uh, B divided by A. Gamble. We do print line e A dot. times B. All right, so there's our uh, four main mathematical operators. So if we go ahead and run this, I'm going to do control shift and R to run this. And we'll see pop up here. B plus A is 37.3, um, which is 25.3 plus 12. 25.3 minus A is 13.3. B 25.3 divided by 12 is uh, this decimal, and 12 times 25.3 is uh, this big number here. Um, so for the next one, I'm going to change this actually to uh, back to a whole number, an integer at integer. Um, I think will work out well. And so what this one is called is this is called the modulo operator. All right. Modulus. So if we do um, print line, and um, well, first off, let's do so we have uh, B divided by A. Let's go ahead and run this again. And so 25 divided by 12 is 2. So that's that's this division right here. Um, but what is the remainder? So this is the whole number um, divider, right? Um, but ah. 12 goes into 25 twice with a remainder of 1, right? And so that's where we can that's where we can use the modulo operator here um, to get the remainder. So if we say um, b modulo, which is the percent sign, modulo a, and then we run that, what we should get is the remainder, which is equal to 1, which is this guy right here. Okay. Um, so that can be useful in uh, specific uh, certain scenarios when you need the, the uh, remainder. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's how you use it, the modulo operator. All right, so those are the uh, main operators that you're uh, going to be using in most development. So uh, there you go. Pretty straightforward, um, basic basic math. Um, but yeah, just to uh, make sure we have that all covered. And so there you go. And I will see you all in the next one. Quits. 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 What you skipped? What does mutable mean in in relation to a variable? Uh, oh, when I now I could could have finished it, but I didn't. How would you declare an immutable variable in uh, Kotlin? Val. If a variable is called name, what is the correct syntax for using it as a string? Name not to take string. I back it a string. A string is a collection of characters. Uh, if you need to find the remainder of division, I'll start the modules. Continue, I'm all the modules. There's a lot of functions. Yeah, salam, Akamel. I'm as happy as you. Hey everyone, welcome back to class. Functions. Johnny B here with DevSlopes.com, and in this lesson, we are going to learn about functions. All right, mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and create a new file like we've been doing. Right-clicking on the source folder, I'm going to go to New and Kotlin File Class. And this one we're going to call Functions. I'm going to say Okay. Okay. And we're going to say Main to get our uh, main function entry point for this Kotlin file. And uh, let's talk a little bit about functions. All right, so what is a function? A function is a modular bit of code uh, that you can call from another location in code, and it will then do a specific thing. So the example I like to use is if you think about yourself or another person, uh, each of us has abilities. All right, and you can kind of think of those abilities as functions. Uh, for instance, walking could be considered a function that someone has. Uh, jumping could be a function. Talking could be a function. And when you want to walk, talk, or jump, your brain calls that function, um, or in other words, executes the code that is in the function to do what we want it to do. Uh, some functions don't require anything extra. For instance, jumping. Uh, you don't need anything extra to be able to just stand up and jump. Um, but some functions require that we are first given uh, specific objects in order to perform that function, uh, like juggling. You know, you can't juggle if you don't have those uh, balls or whatever that it is that you're going to juggle. So you need to be given those um, objects with the function of juggle to be able to perform that function. Um, and some functions receive and return objects in turn, like playing catch. If I call the function to play catch with you, I'm going to throw a ball to you, you receive that object, and then you do something with it, you catch it, and then you return it back to me. You return the ball back to me. Right? So let's go ahead and take a closer look at how that looks in code. Uh, let's continue our Star Wars theme and look at Darth Vader, all right? So let's say we write a function for Darth Vader called force choke. 
All right, which we uh, which we're gonna do like this. So this is the syntax for writing a function in Kotlin. You uh, start out with fun. All right, so um, in some other languages that's func, f-u-n-c, um, or in previously in Java it was you'd say something like static fun. void. Um, but so here we just say fun, and then the name of the function. So we're gonna say force choke. Then we're gonna do um, open close parentheses, open close. and it's empty because this particular function doesn't require. Um, I had the extra the input. It doesn't require that we pass input. into this function something for it to be able to use. All right, and so then we do. Uh, open and close curly braces. Okay. okay. So declare that it's a function, give it a name. If we aren't passing anything into it, um, then it's empty. It can, it can avoid the, and the body of the function goes right here. So whatever it is that happens when this function is called goes right here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to print out. We're going to say print line. And we're going to say, you have failed me for the last time. <laughs> okay. Then now, joke uh, just because um, we have written this function, <laughs> that's actually going to happen. So if I run this, you need to call a function. You can see that um, it's not printed out. That's because just because we have written the function doesn't mean that it's going to be executed. Just because Darth Vader has the ability to force choke call. doesn't mean that he is force choking anyone, although he probably is. So <laughs> to do it, we have to call the function. We're going to say force choke. Okay, That's all you have to do. Just call the function. Force and it's done, choke. Uh, just like that. All right, so now if we run it, we get we, we see that this function has been called right here, which means that it goes into this um, the body of the function and executes whatever is inside of it. In which case we have printed out, um, "You have failed me for the last time, Admiral." All right, so there we go, and uh, so that's the so or that you can write yourself. So now, what if Darth Vader needs something to perform a function? Uh, let's pretend that he's at a loss for words, all right, and he needs our help to be able to come up with some snappy line, all right. So we're going to create a function in which we pass into the function a line for him to say, all right. So we're going to say, "Fun." We're going to say, "Make an entrance," okay. And so we've got the, our opening and closing parentheses and our curly braces. But here this time, now we're going to pass into the function a parameter, all right? and so we're going to write here. We're going to write some, what, um, what's called an argument, okay. So we're going to uh, say line and string, okay? Line. And so this part right here, this is um, the name of the argument. And so this is the line that we're passing ah, into okay. the function. We're giving a line well, no, to Darth Vader. Miss you. Okay, so that's cool. just the name of the argument. And then we have a, a colon, and then we set the type of the um, argument, okay? So we are passing into this function a string that is named line. And then we can do whatever we want inside of the function with this um, argument line, okay? So we can say here. And the, and we're gonna print out the line that we pass in, okay? So let's go ahead and call it. We're going to say make an entrance, and you'll see here that we have um, line and string. All right, and so we're going to press return, and then we're going to pass into it. You can see here it says line and string. So if we start writing some quotation marks, and we say, I find your lack of faith disturbing. All right, so we are calling the function make an entrance. We are passing into it right here a okay. string. And so once we uh, run this, um, what's going to happen is we call this function, pass into it a parameter, passing an argument, and yeah. the parameter that we're passing into it is a uh, string called line. And then we're going to take that um, line parameter and we're going to print it out. All right. So then I'm going to say Control Shift R to run this again. And here we go. Here we have it. I find your lack of faith disturbing. All right. So then we also talked about those functions that can return something back to us, right? And uh, we talked about the example of playing catch. So if I call the function to play catch on a friend, I have to pass a variable to him, the baseball, Ball. football, or whatever it is, mm. and then he returns that um, that uh, he returns something back to me. And so the the code for that might look like um, passing to him a variable. Um, he sees the ball coming. He reacts to it, catches it, and then winds up and returns it back to me. All right. So what that looks like in code is the following. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a function that calculates Sketch. the uh, number of good guys that are surrounding Darth Vader. All right. So we're going to say uh, fun calculate uh, number good guys. Okay. And so we're going to pass into the function um, a couple of numbers. We're going to say rebels. All right. So this is the name of the argument. And then the type is going to be of type int. And then we're going to say Ewoks. So a second argument. And so when you have multiple arguments, you separate them by commas. Uh, int okay. capital so N. Also going to be of type int. And now when we are returning uh, an object, we say colon, and then we specify the type that is going to be returned. Okay. Uh, uh, اه فدي ما بتاخدش البتاع في الاول يعني بدل ما بتكتب public مثلا string keeps فترجع string بتكتبها في الاخر فهي function بتاخد كذا 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 وبترجع integer هي كمان probably هنعمل الاثنين دول كلوز بعض يعني اوكي ولسه بتقول له return كذا فماشي اوكي خلاص اوكي what we're gonna do is we're going to pass into this return فعلا two numbers and the number of keys and then we're going to Calculate. We're going to add those up, and then we're going to return the sum of those. Okay. And so this part right here, the colon and int, is saying we are going to be returning something, and it's of type int. 
Right, so then here inside we can say val good guys. Uh, good okay, guys. Creating a local variable, meaning that uh, this variable yeah, good guys is only um, accessible and usable inside of this function. Okay, mm -hmm. so then we're gonna say val good guys is equal to rebels plus ewoks. Okay. Okay, and then it's we have here because it's expecting a return. It's an expression. Because we've said this function is gonna return good guys. But so far we haven't said uh, uh -huh. what it's going to be returning. So to do that we say return. In line the line of line right here. Okay. So just to recap. We have created a function called calculate number of good guys. We are passing into that function two arguments, um, rebels and Ewoks, both of type int. And then we are going to be returning an int. And the thing that we are returning is the sum of uh, these two parameters that we pass into it, rebels plus Ewoks. And then we return um, that integer right here. Okay. So then the way to call that function is uh, we can say something like uh, val rebels is equal to, and then we just call that function, calculate number good guys. And we're going to pass into it. Um, two parameters, the uh, number of rebels, so we'll say something like five, and the number of Ewoks, we'll say something like seven, okay? And so what's happening here is we are setting the variable rebels equal to the returned value of this function, okay? So we call this function and we pass into it rebels five and Ewoks seven. So we got here uh, five plus seven is 12, and then we return that number as the result of this function. So it's essentially saying, this is the same as, I'm just gonna make a comment here, a val, rebels is equal to 12 okay and then we can use that we can say something like print line um say uh, darth vader faced off against and then we can use our string template right so we can say dollar sign rebels rebel scum darth vader faced off against طيب هو كان بيقول يعني انك انت ممكن تكريت بعد كده دي تحطها جوه فالي فال فال جود جايز Equal calculate كذا 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 كذا. وبعدين بيقول لك إنك أنت ممكن تعمل كذا. يا عم لا. Vader faced off against against the rebels. Question is, يا عم لا. Good guys, good guys, good guys. ماشي. سؤال بقى هل أنا ممكن أعمل كذا؟ أكيد هاي كلام عنها يعني. Vader faced off against calculate. I'm gonna have to calculate. Number of guys, nine or three, for example. Or we can do it. We have to put it in brackets. Any function that we do in the inline string, we have to put it in brackets. That's super sexy. And using our string template, this is the same as saying twelve or the result of this function. Twelve rebel scum. All right, so let's print that. All right, here we go. Darth Vader faced off against twelve rebel scum. Um, another uh, more direct way of doing that, we could say print line, and I'm just going to copy this, and drop this in here. But instead of um, creating a variable, what we could do is use our string template and um, get it directly. Bracket so that, we call the, uh, method inside the string template. We gotta say we use curly braces, so dollar sign, then curly braces, and then we call the function calculate number of good guys. We pass in our um, arguments, parameters, and that's it. So that's how you can. Uh, Call those functions. هل ممكن تبقى compound يعني مثلاً لو أنا جيت قلت له string اللي إحنا كنا كريتينه فوق dot length. آها cool nice okay. ماشي. You're inside of um, string and you can interpolate that to a string. So if we run that again, if you get the same result, yep, Darth Vader faced off against twelve rebel scum. All right, and so um, hopefully that's not too confusing. And uh, we've been using uh, functions like this, uh, for instance, in our strings file. Um, say, uh, you know, right here, we say that val uppercase is equal to string dot two uppercase. So what's happening is we're passing into uh, this function um, our, our previous string, um, this guy right here, may the force be with you. And then we are returning the string in an uppercase format and setting that equal to this variable. So yeah, not too, not too tough um, when you kind of break it down into its functions. And uh, so just one more time to recap, we declare a function, we Set it, uh, we give it a name, we set any argument or parameters that we want to pass into it by giving it a name and specifying its type. And you can have multiple arguments, um, separating them by commas. And then if you want the function to return a value, you say um, colon and then the type. And this could be you know anything, it could be a string, it could be um, whatever it is. Um, just know that the uh, value that you're returning needs to match that. Because So for instance, if I put string here, and then uh, I'm returning an integer, it's going to say type mismatch. All right, so uh, we're expecting to be returning a string, but we're trying to return an int, and that's just not going to work. All right, so I'm going to change this back to an int. And then the last thing that I want to talk about here in functions is that sometimes it's really nice to be able to have a default value for, mm. um, for some of your arguments. So, and so how we do that is the following. So we're going to say fun, 
we're going to say Vader is feeling. All right, so this is a function to let us know how Vader is doing. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, mood. It's going to be of type string. String, but we're going to have a default value of angry. Okay, and then we're going to say print line mood. Okay. So what we've done here is just like we've been doing, we have our function, we give it a name, we have an argument um, with the name of mood and its type is string. But then we have here equals a string, equals angry. All right, and so this is the default value. And that means that if we okay. just call this function, later is feeling, and then we run it, without setting any parameter Ooh. for the argument, then it automatically um, defaults to the default value. All right, and so that's, uh, that's actually a pretty useful thing. But then we can change it. We can say Vader is feeling, and then we can pass in a mood. So we can say meh. Meh. Okay. So then we nice. are able to override the default value. And Hello, the value of yeah, so that's pretty much the, the basics of functions uh, that you'll that you'll be seeing in, in this course. We might get into a little bit more complicated stuff later on, but these are the basics. And I know it can be a little bit confusing at first, um, but hopefully these silly analogies have kind of helped you um, wrap your mind around functions and and uh, passing into the function arguments, um, return values, and all that kind of stuff. All right. So hope you guys are having fun with this, and I will see you in the next one. So if we have you the next one. Practice writing functions. Start your exercise here. The man, I'm not telling you that. Ha! We go to medium, medium block of master. Woohoo! Course. Hey everyone, yeah, welcome back. Johnny B here with DevSlopes.com, and in this lesson, we are going to learn about conditional logic. I've been on break for minutes. Hold on, idle.
I'm back. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Well, in our uh, everyday lives, we are faced with all sorts of choices and decisions, right? Uh, what to wear, what to eat, where to go. Now, we have to make these decisions for ourselves. But our computers, our programs, they are kind of dumb in some ways and super smart in others. Um, but one, where, one place where they do not excel is making their own choices. So we as programmers, we have to tell them exactly how to handle um, each scenario that they run into, all right? And so we, we do that with conditional logic. So let's go ahead and create a new source file here. So here on the source folder, I'm going to right click and say new. Kotlin file class is going to be a file, and we're going to name this one conditional logic. Okie dokie. All right, so let's go ahead and put in our main entry point. So we're going to say main, and let's start off with a super simple example. We're going to start off with a couple of variables here. So I'm going to say val a is equal to b, or uh, val a is equal to 2, and val b is also equal to 2. Okay, so how do we do um, some conditional logic? So normally this entails some options. You know, we're we may be comparing two things. In this case, we're going to look at uh, the values of a and b and see if they are equal. So to do that, we say if, then we have open and close parentheses. This is where the condition goes. All right, and so with if statements, the condition always has to evaluate to true or false. So we're going to say if a is equal equal to b, and so you'll notice here this is new. We have two equal signs here. So when we have one equal sign, we are assigning a value to a variable. When we have two equal signs, this is looking at equality. So it's looking at does a have the same value as b. All right, so this is our conditional portion of the um, statement here. And then we do open and close curly brace. So if this evaluates to true, then whatever is between your curly braces is going to run. OK, so we're going to say print line. If a equals b, then we're just going to say a does, in fact, equal b. OK, and if we run this, you'll see here that it does print out a does, in fact, equal b, because a does equal b. So this evaluates to true. So then it continues into the body of the if statement. Now, if we uh, make this, if we make b equal to 3, and then we can do uh, something else. We can do if um, a does not equal b. So this right here, with the exclamation point before the equal, this is how we um, say does not equal. Okay. So this is saying, does a equal b? If so, do this. And this is saying, if a does not equal b, then we'll do something. So we'll say print line. We'll say a does not equal b. Okay. So now when I run this, um, it's going to run through all of this. So it's going to hit this one first. And it's going to say, does a equal b? Does 3 equal 2? It does not. So this is not even going to be run. It's just going to stop here and then continue on with the rest of our uh, file here. And then it's going to come to this one. It's going to say, does a not equal b? a does not equal b. So this evaluates to true. So then we are going to enter here and print out a does not equal b. OK, so I'm going to run this. Control Shift R. And you see here that it does indeed say a does not equal b. All right, so that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward uh, conditional statements here. Um, let's do a little bit more. Let's say val account balance is equal to 100. Then we're going to say val price is equal to 50. Right? So we got uh, old Billy Bob here. His account balance is at $100, and he's looking to buy something that costs 50. So we are going to do a check to make sure that he has enough money. So we're going to say if, and then we got our parentheses. So if our account balance is greater than or equal to the price, then we are going to be able to say, print line, you can buy this. All right, so now we're using um, a couple of variables and greater than or equal. So now we're checking on um, not the not that they are the same as each other, but whether one is greater than the other. Okay, so we're saying is 100 greater than or equal to 50? If so, then you can buy this. Um, but what if it's not? Um, we want to be able to handle that as well, and that's done with else statements. So if something and if it um, evaluates to false, then we have this else. Okay, so we say if the account balance is greater than or equal to the price, we can buy it. But if it's not, then what do we do? Well, then we're just going to say. Print line. Uh, sorry, you broke. All right, so before we run this, which one of these um, print statements is going to run? Do, do the logic in your head and then uh, check it out. All right, so it says you can buy this. So 100 is indeed greater than 50. So this is the statement that evaluates it true. And so you can buy this as printed. However, if we put this up to 150 and we run it, now account balance greater than or equal to price evaluates to false. And so this line is printed. All right, so that's how if else's are handled. All right, now let's introduce uh, a few more. Um, components to our if else statements. Uh, so we're going to say val degrees, as in temperature, is equal to 70. All right, so we're going to start out. We're going to say if degrees is greater than or equal to 70. Then we're going to say uh, print line. This is some nice weather. Nice. Okay? So if we uh, ran this, then it would print out this is some nice weather. Um, but let's handle what happens if it's colder than 70 degrees. So. We can also say, we can say else if, if, and then we can have some more um, 
conditions. So instead of doing just above and below 70, we're going to have a range. We're going to have above 70, and then we're going to have a range of 50 to 70, and then we're going to have a range of below uh, 50. So for that, we need an if, else if, else statement. OK, so we can say if degrees is less than 70, then we're going to introduce um, here and. So if it's less than 70 and it's greater than or equal to 50, then we're going to do something else. Then we're going to say print line grab a sweater. OK, so so far we have covered anything above 70 degrees. Then with this else if statement, we're covering between uh, 50 and 70. And the uh, degree needs to be between 50 and between 70. That's what this and is, all right? Anything else, if it's um, below 50 degrees, will be handled by this else statement, OK? So we've covered everything above 50. Now uh, this is going to cover anything below 50. So we can say print line, holy crap, it's cold. So you may be thinking 49 degrees is not cold. Well, it is for me. I'm a baby. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And you can see here that since we have the degrees set to 70, we print out. This is some nice weather, our first uh, print line right here. So what if we change this? Let's make sure our logic is working. So let's do 60. So 60 is between 50 and 70, right? So we should expect this one to print out. So go ahead and run that. And there we go. Grab a sweater because it is 60 degrees. All right, so now let's do uh, our last check. Let's say uh, 20 degrees. And there we go. Holy crap, it's cold. All right, so there we go. There's our if, else, if, else. That's how you can handle um, multiple um, conditionals. Um, and then you have, we introduced the and here. You can also do um, what's called or, but uh, we'll cover that here in uh, just a second. And just to cover the other uh, conditional operators here, um, you have, we already did equal, so that's uh, checking the equality of two uh, variables. We have not equal to make sure that they are not the same. We have uh, greater than, which uh, does not include the number itself. So right here we're saying if it's 70 or more, so that's what the greater than or equal is. We have less than, which would not include the variable. And we have greater than or equal, and then of course less than or equal. Alrighty, so those are your uh, comparators that you can use when uh, working with um, conditional logic. All right, so we've been working with um, variables um, in numbers up to this point, um, checking equality, greater than or equal, less than or equal, et cetera. Um, so now let's look at um, some bools, all right? So I'm going to say val is hungry, and that is equal to false. I'm going to say val is bored, and that's equal to true, OK? So now we're going to do conditional logic based on Boolean values, OK? So we're going to say if is hungry is equal to true, or, and so this is the pipes, and this is uh, on a Mac keyboard, it's shift, and then the key um, that shares backslash, and that's right above the enter key, okay? Um, so the two of those, two pipes, um, or is bored is equal to true. So if we are hungry or if we are bored, then we're going to say print line, let's get pizza. Okay, so here we're saying if is hungry is true. Or if, is, or if is bored is equal to true, then let's get pizza. All right, so and then you'll see here that we have is hungry is false, but we are bored. So when we run this, it's going to go is hungry equal to true? No, but then we're going to come here and we're going to say is bored equal to true? Yes, it is. And since we only need one or the other of these to evaluate to true, to uh, continue to this statement, we're going to print this out. So we're going to say control shift R. All right, and so here you go. Let's get pizza because at least one of these is true. Uh, if we did true for both of them, it would still print out. But the only way for it to not print out is if both of them are false. Okay, So I'm going to change uh, board back to true. And then I also want to show you, um, with uh, these Booleans, you can actually get rid of these um, statements right here. So you can just have just like that. So if is hungry or is bored. The equal equal to true is uh, kind of implicit if you don't have them on there. Okay, So if is hungry or is bored, it's implicitly saying, are these equal to true? Um, to implicitly have it the other way, you could just put a exclamation point in front of it. So if we are not hungry or we are bored, then we're going to eat pizza. Um, but yeah, so that's how you could um, do the um, implicit e equality check for, for, for the false. Um, I see the habit so far. All right, so now I want to introduce you to um, something called the when statement. All right? So in other mm, languages, when. this is often called a switch. And so basically what we're doing is we're telling it to get a specific that, then uh, variable okay. and then to do specific operations based on what that um, variable is. Um, it's often a good replacement for long if else um, chains. If else, um, if else, if so else, yeah, let's go over that. Uh, so we're going to say val x is equal to uh, 1. Okay? Then we're going to say, so how you do the when is you say when. And then you give it the parameter that you want to do a check on. Okay, So in this case, we're um, looking at x and making a decision on what the value of it is. And so then you say, OK, what can x be? Um, mm. Well, let's say x could be 1, x could be 2. And then x could be um, anything else. All right. So we're going to do checks on 1 and 2 and then anything else. All right. So how you write what you want it to do based on the value is you do a dash and then a dash. Dash. Okay. So it looks like an error. Arrow. So what we're pretty interesting <laughs> is, all right, we're going to check out what the value of x is. And based on this um, value, we're going to do something. All right. So if it's 1, then we're going to say print line. We're going to say x is equal to 1. If it's 2, then we're going to say print line. X is equal to 2. This is and clean. And you have to make it exhaustive, meaning that all um, possible scenarios are taken care of. And so in this case, we'll just say else. All right? So 
Else, if it's not either of those, then we're going to say print line um, x does not equal 1 or 2. Okay. Nice. So just to uh, go over this one more time, we're looking at specific cases so the switch. Um, that x could be. Okay. x could be 1, and if it is, then we are going to do this. If it's 2, then we're going to do this. And if it's not either of those, well, then we're just going to say it doesn't equal either of those. All right. So we're going to start out with it at 1. We're going to run this. And as expected, we hit this case, see that it is 1, and so we execute its uh, conditional. And so we print out x is equal to 1, I'm to, we change it to 2, and we run this. We, of course, get x is equal to 2, and if we change it to 3, then we get x yeah, is not yeah, equal yeah, 1 yeah, or 2. Too. All right, and uh, this is going to cover probably 90% of all of the conditional logic that you're going to need to write. <laughs> perhaps, you know. um, it's pretty simple. If else is um, evaluating um, conditions um, using the uh, the whens, um, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. But now let's go ahead and combine everything that we've learned up to this point. We've covered uh, strings, variables, uh, functions. So let's go ahead and let's revisit this function that we had. Um, Vader is feeling, and let's add some conditional logic to it now. All right, so let's come back here, and I'm going to say uh, fun. We're going to create a function. So remember what we did just last lesson. We're going to say fun. Vader is feeling, and uh, we have a, an argument called mood, and it is going to be a type string. Then we're going to give it a default value of angry. Great. Our open closing curly braces. Uh, so now let's do some logic. Let's say if we're going to say if the mood is equal to angry. So here we have our equality. Uh, so equal equal if, uh, if it's in the default state, if hello, it's in the default state. Equal equal the string, which is not typical of equals and shit. It's a Mr. Java. We're going to say print line run for the hills. Vader is. Then we're going to do our string template. I'm going to say mood. mood. Right, so we are um, going to interpolate the string value of our uh, variable mood, which is angry. All right. So if he's angry, then we're going to do this. Else, Else. print line. And then we're going to say whatever you do, don't make him angry. All right. And so here we go. We combine a lot of what we learned so far. We have a function here with an argument and a um, with a default value. We've added our conditional stuff that we've learned here. We're saying if the mood is equal to angry, then print this out. Else, print out whatever you do. Don't make him angry. And you remember how to call functions. Pretty easy. All we got to do is say Vader is feeling. And uh, we'll do angry first. So I'm going to run this. And we're going to call this function. We are going to do an e uh, uh, we're going to do a conditional check here. Uh, mood does indeed equal angry. So we're going to print out run for the hills. Vader is angry. But if we change that up and we give him a new mood, we'll say happy. happy. And we run it. Then we come down to here and we say, whatever you do, don't make him angry. Right, so that's pretty much it. That is conditional logic at its uh, basics. Um, pretty straightforward. It's just decision making. You know, if this, then that. If this is greater than or equal to, do this. And uh, yeah, so once you know the syntax, um, how to uh, implement if statements, uh, knowing how to do the or, the and checks, um, how to do uh, when statements, then, uh, then it all kind of uh, falls into place for you guys, all right? So hope you guys are having fun, and I will see you all in the next one. Collections. Hey everyone, welcome back. Johnny B here with devspokes.com, and in this lesson, we are going to learn about collections, right? So what is a collection? Like it might sound, it is a collection of multiple objects. All right, and so uh, something important to know first... I'll break the other two things, but not for hot.
هاي انا جيت بيتكلم المره دي عن ايه بقى؟ كولكشنز ده اكتشلي امبورتنت لان اغلب الحاجات اللي بترجع من مستر هوبا اند مستر اي بي ايز كولكشنز ليتس سي Off, is that Kotlin doesn't have its own collection classes. It actually, um, they're actually built right off of the Java uh, collection classes. However, they do extend the functionality of them, all right? So we're going to learn about some of those uh, new things that we can do and uh, some of the collection uh, classes. And there, there are quite a few collection classes. Um, you have your arrays, your uh, maps, your queues, um, your sets. Um, but right now, we're only going to focus on um, two of those collection types, which are the um, arrays and the maps, OK? So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to our source folder here, right click and say new Kotlin file class. And we're going to call All this collections. Okay, I'm going to say okay. Let's go ahead and put in our main entry point. So in Kotlin, um, one of the one, one big difference um, between it and other languages is it separates its collection types into mutable and immutable types. Okay. So if you uh, recall back to our variables um, conversation, mutable means that it can be changed. Immutable that it cannot be changed. Okay. And so we're going to start out first with the uh, immutable um, array type. Okay. And there are actually a few different ways to create arrays um, in Kotlin. Um, but just to uh, simplify things, we're going to uh, look at um, the list of way. Okay. So we're going to say val imperials. OK, going back to our Star Wars theme, we're going to say these imperials are a list of. And this is how you create a list, OK? So a list is essentially an array. All right? And we want this one right here, list of our arg. OK, so we're going to say return. And now we can enter in a list of um, objects. It could be numbers. It could be strings. And so here we're going to have a list of imperials. And so we're going to have first the emperor. Then we're going to have Darth Vader. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Boba Fett. Oh, forgot my quotation marks. Boba Fett. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how about Tarkin? There we go. And so now we have an array, a list of um, strings that are representative of our imperial. So if we say print line and uh, we go ahead and print this out, let's see what that looks like. All right, and so you see here, we have these printed out, and they are enclosed by square brackets. So whenever you see um, these square brackets, that almost always means that uh, this is an array. Okay. And like I said, we started out with the immutable um, version of the array. And so this list, it cannot be altered. We can't add to it. We can't um, modify the values here inside of it. All right? But uh, there are a lot of things that we can do. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the um, functions that we can use um, with the, with the uh, list. We can say print line, and we can uh, say imperials.sorted. Okay? And that's going to go ahead and sort our uh, list. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see here that we have returned a list um, that is sorted based on alphabetical order. So D oh, before D before E option. before T. Uh, so, so that's useful. You can sort them. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, we can uh, access individual um, objects inside of the list. So you can kind of I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, we're looking for the imperials of sorted D. They're going to sorted by by la 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 alphabetic order. Sorted by Eva. Sorted by we take the comparable with iterable selector. Like if you had this printed out in a um, vertical line, you would start from the top, and that would be zero. Okay. So with arrays and with um, collection types in almost all languages, um, the first item in the array is actually index zero. Okay. So this would be zero, one, two, three. All right. And so to access that, let's go ahead and show you how to do that. We can do imperials, and then you can do open and close um, square brace, and then you can put in the index that you want to access. So this is going to be number two, which would be which one? Not Darth Vader, because it's not one, two. It's zero, one, and. Often the last keep one. Don't know print line. Imperials dot oh, dot brackets of the letter Z arrays. So we're going to be printing out Boba Fett here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. And Boba Fett. So that is how you access um, objects in your array. Another Double. thing you can do is you can say print line, and you could do if you wanted the first, you could do dot first, mm -hmm. like that. You could do dot last, and that would give you the last one in line. And then you could do uh, checks for um, whether or not your array contains um, something specific. So you could say print line, and it's going to return a uh, boolean. So you can say imperials dot contains. Okay, and so you can say um, does it contain a specific element? Okay, so does it contain emperor? All right, let's run that and see. So this should evaluate the true. Yep, there we go. So here's our true. Um, but let's say does our imperial array contain Luke? And that should evaluate to false. All right. So there we go. So those are just a few of the um, useful um, methods that you can use with your with your lists. All right. So this was our mu uh, immutable list uh, array. So now let's take a look at the uh, mutable one. Okay, so let's say uh, rebels. 
equal to and to uh, make this one you go array list of okay so the mutable immutable one the one that we can't change is list of the one that we can change and add to is array list of and i grab the wrong constructor we want array list of this one right here with the var arg elements so that we can directly initialize and add elements right off the bat so here we're going to say uh, who do we have here with the rebels we have leia um i think i spelled that wrong eh, doesn't matter leia we have uh luke we have han solo and we have mon mothma okay so now we have an array that we are able to modify so let's go ahead and so we're going to say print line. We're going to check on the size first. So we're going to say rebels dot size. All right. And so what this is going to do, this is going to um, give us the number of um, elements inside of this array. And that is four. Bah. So we have one, two, three, four elements. But now let's go ahead and add one. All right. And so we can do that by saying rebels dot add. And you'll see here we have um, some options. We have add element. And this is just going to add to the end of it. Or we can add to a specific index. So let's go ahead and uh, try both. Let's do this one first. So we're going to add uh, Chewbacca. OK. So Chewie is going to be added. And he's going to be added at the very end right here. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, now print line rebels add, add. and you can see here that Chewbacca has been added to the end of our array list um, but what if we wanted to add to a specific index so we can say add at index so the index let's put um let's put lando in there and he's going to be at index zero so we're moving him right to the front of the line and so we're going to say lando okay let's run that oh actually we got to print out the value search to see that he's been added so let's say print line rebels and then let's run that all right, there we go. So you can see here previously that uh, Leia was first and Chewbacca was last. Now we have Lando has been moved to the front of the line um, using this add function here. So that's pretty useful. Another useful function is um, right here we can say uh, print line rebels dot index of element. And so we can uh, get directly the index of one of our elements. So if we know that one of these elements is in there somewhere and we just need to know at which index it is, we can say uh, index of and then we can uh, get it directly. So Luke, we're going to be looking for Luke. And so Luke is now uh, 0, 1, 2. And as expected, uh, we get the value back for um, number 2. So we've gone over how to add to our uh, array list. Now, how do we remove? Um, so what if someone dies? Oh, no. So we can say rebels.remove, and we can remove by either the element itself or at a specific index. So let's go ahead and remove by element. And uh, Han Solo is uh, removed from the rebels. Spoiler alert. And then so if we print a line and we say rebels, we print that. Now we can see that Han Solo is no longer part of this array list. So you can, uh, like I said, you can remove by um, the element itself or by index value. So that is uh, arrays and lists. Um, now let's talk about something called maps. All right? um, so while a list is kind of just an ordered um, sequential uh, number of items, a map is a collection of unordered key value pairs. All right, so what do I mean by key value pairs? Uh, if you think about a phone book, how useful would a phone book be if it was in an array list format, where it was just a whole bunch of uh, phone numbers? You had no idea who they belong to. Um, well, luckily, we have it in the format of um, name and then the phone number. And so the name is the key, and the phone number is the value. All right. And so that's what a map is. It's a collection of key value pairs. Um, it's unordered. You can't have duplicate keys. All right. And just like lists, you can have an immutable or a mutable um, version of it. All right. And so um, like lists, we're going to start out with the immutable or the one that you can't change. All right. So we're going to say val. We're going to say rebel vehicles map is equal to. And uh, to create a map, we say map of. And again, we want this one right here with the var arg pairs so that we can just add them in right here. And we are going to say solo, whoops, then the keyword two. And then we're going to, so these are going to be the rebels uh, vehicles. So solo flies the millennium falcon, right? And so uh, let's, let's take a look at here. So we are initializing our map. And like I said, we have key value pairs. So if this were a phone book, this would be the name, uh, the and this would be the uh, phone number. All right. So this is the key, and this is the value. And the two word is saying we are mapping the value of whatever is here to this key here. OK? OK. Sense? Quick timeout. This is a map of type string string. It could be a map of other two types, like val number map valuable two of two image. OK. I'm just as a marble string and string here. Let's go ahead and add one more. We're going to say uh, Luke is the key, and we are mapping to this key the value of land speeder. Alrighty, and now uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, methods that you can use with with this uh, with this value with this collection type. So we can say print line. How do we access one of these? Um, so to access these, um, we access it by its key. All right. So you know those vending machines where you have all of the all your uh, treats in there, and it's arranged by rows and columns. And so like the first row will be A1, A2, through whatever, and then B, C, D. So uh, it's, it's exactly like that. So when you want something, you take a look and you punch in like D3. You want those skittles, all right? So D3 is the key, and then it goes and it gets the value at D3 at the key, and then it returns that to you. Okay. So we're going to say print line, and we're going to say rebel v equals map, and we can do it like this, where we um, do square um, square brackets, and then we put in the key. So we're going to say solo. And so what this does is it goes and it goes through and it finds the, the key that matches this, and then it's going to return the value for it. So this would print out Millennium Falcon. The other way to uh, access it is with its um, getter function. So we can say rebel vehicles map dot get. And then you can see here that uh, we can say get by the key value. Or we have something that can be very useful, useful here, get or default key. All right, so let's go and take a look at both. So get key, and the key is uh, solo. And then let's let's check out that uh, default one. So here we can say rebel vehicles map dot get or default. So let's say 
we think that Leo's in there, so we're going to say get Leo's ship. Or we can supply a default value, uh, just in case Leo's ship isn't in there. And the default value is going to be this ship doesn't exist. So if it's not able to find a, an entry that has the key of Leia, then we prevent a crash or anything by supplying a default value, all right? So let's go ahead and print this. And sure enough, um, from here, we are able to go and access the value for the key of Solo. And when we tried to look for the key of Leia and didn't find it, we went ahead and just uh, provided a default value. So that's pretty useful. A couple other things you can do is you can go ahead and print out um, all of the keys and or values. So you can do uh, print out the keys or the values. But remember that this is an immutable collection, so we can't add or subtract to this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, mutable version of the map. And so okay. how to do that, we say val, and uh, we'll just call this one rebel vehicles. And that is created by a hash map of, and we want this one right here, hash map of var arg pairs. Okay, we can go ahead and uh, put those right in. Let's go ahead and copy what we had up here, just to speed things up a little. Uh, uh, provide a default value. So that's pretty useful. A couple other things you can do is you can go ahead and print out um, all of the keys and or values. So you can do, uh, print out the keys or the values. But remember that this is an immutable collection, so we can't add or subtract to this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, mutable version of the map. And so how to do that, we say val, and uh, we'll just call this one rebel vehicles. And that is created by a hash map of, and we want this one right here, hash map of var arg pairs. Okay, we can go ahead and uh, put those right in. Let's go ahead and copy what we had up here, just to speed things up a little. And then let's add uh, our old friend Boba. And his vehicle is rocket pack. Okay, so remember the key, and then the keyword two, and then its value. Okay, let's scroll back here. Okay, so now this, since this one is mutable, we can go ahead and add to it. We can change the values inside of it. Uh, so let's take a look at how to change the uh, the value of one of these keys. All right, so we can do uh, this. We can say rebel vehicles, and then we can access the um, value of it by finding its key. So the key. Let's go ahead and change Luke's um, land speeder. You know, he's he's big shot now. He's upgraded. He's got his own X wing. So we are accessing it. So we are going and finding the pair, and we are setting the value of it now to X wing. All right, and so that's how we can change um, the value of this key. And we're also missing a general organa here, right? So let's go ahead and add it. Unresolved references. Oh, name it day. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, get it. Zabot, Messi. So we're going to say rebel vehicles. And we can do that by um, adding a new key, kind of like we did here. Um, so we're going to say Leia is equal. Um, but there are built in functions for it as well. So we're going to say vehicles.put. Okay, and so here we're going to put in a key and a value. So we're going to say put. And the key is Leia. Ah. And the value is the Pontive 4. And if we print out uh, Rebel Vehicles now and run this, we can see that uh, here in our uh, map we have Solo and his Millennium Falcon, we have Leia and the um, her ship, we have Luke and his X-Wing, and Boba Fett and his rocket pack. But hey, what's Boba Fett doing in there? He's not a rebel. Let's go ahead and remove him. So to do that, we say Rebel Vehicles dot remove, and you can remove for the key. And so the key for Boba Fett is B-O-B-A-F-E-T-T. -T. So now when we print out the Rebels Vehicles and run this, we have removed Boba Fett, and he is no longer part of the Rebels Alliance. All right, last couple that I want to look at is uh, rebelvehicles.clear will clear out uh, all of the uh, entries in your um, in your hash map. Um, also, rebelvehicles.is empty is a boolean that will return uh, true or false based on whether or not it is empty. All right, and that's pretty much uh, all we're going to cover here. Uh, this is a hugely important concept and skill to understand. Lists and hash maps are used like everywhere. Whether it's a chat app, you're going to be holding all of those messages in arrays. Whether it's a recipe app, you're going to be holding all those recipes in arrays. You know, it, they're, they're everywhere. You can open up any app, and you can I'm sure you'll be able to find an example of where they're holding information and data in, in arrays or hash maps, right? So very important to learn. Um, go through this a few more times. Uh, play around with some of the other functions that are available to you. And I will see you all in the next one. Loops. Everyone, welcome back. Johnny B here with devslopes.com, and uh, in this lesson we are going to talk about loops. All right. So in our previous lesson we talked about collections, right? We have our arrays, we have our hash maps, and lots of times when you have these types of collections, what you're going to want to do is you want to be able to uh, go through them one by one and either and do something. You want to access the information, you might want to change some information, and to do that, the easiest way is using loops. All right. So let's go ahead and create a new source file here. I'm going to right click and say new file. Oh, not file. We want a Kotlin file. Source new Kotlin file. And we'll leave it on file, and we're going to call this file loops. loops. Okay. We put in our main function, and then uh, let's go ahead and go back to our collections file real quick, and let's grab a couple of these um, arrays. So let's grab our rebels array, copy it, jump into our loops file, paste that, command V, back into our collections, command let's get our uh, hash map here. So I'm gonna say back. copy this line, command C for copy, and then back to our loops, and command V to paste it. All right, so now we have our a uh, couple of collection types here, an array list and a hash map. All right, and so how do we loop through them? Uh, well, it's super easy. Um, so this should be a relatively short lesson. Um, all we gotta do is say for, then we say something like rebel in rebels and then open close curly brace. So what we're doing is we're saying for each 
um, we create a variable for what's inside of the list. So for each rebel, so in this case, as we loop through, rebel, the first time we loop through, rebel is going to be Leia. The second time we loop through, rebel is Luke. Mm. The third time, Han Solo. And the fourth time, Mon Mothma. And so it's looping through each time and uh, setting the variable rebel to the value of that um, iteration's uh, value, okay? So for rebel in rebel. And then um, we can go ahead and do something with, uh, with the stream. <laughs> That variable, we can say, for instance, print line, we can say um, name, colon, and using our string template, rebel, okay? Name. Go ahead and run that. And we can see here that we have looped through each of the items in our array list, and then we have printed out name and using our string template the name of the um, item in that array list. So pretty cool, pretty simple. Now how about for a hash map? Now a hash map has two um, things that we might want to know about. We might want to know about the key and the value. Okay, so that's uh, also pretty simple. We just do a, another for loop. So we're going to say for, and uh, this time we're going to have two um, variables. We're going to have the key, so for key and value in okay. rebel vehicles and then open close curly brace. So now we're going to be looping through the rebel vehicles hash map and we're going to cast or we're going to set solo equal to the key in the first um, round going through and value is going to be set to millennium falcon. And then the second time we loop through um loop is we going to be our the key will value keep value keep value okay. And you could actually name these whatever you want um for so for instance here we could have said character or person hmm. or whatever. Hello, um, here we could have said character and, uh, vehicle, you know. Um, basically whatever we put in here is just the name of the variable that is mapped to the um the key and the uh, value for the second item in, in right here, and um, that will be used here in the body of our uh, for loop. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this back to key and value, and uh, so then we can do something we can use those print uh, key or value. Say Merci. key using our string template. Key gets around in there, and then uh, string template value. Okay, so the first time we loop through, it's going to be saying key, which is solo, gets around in there, value, which is Millennium Falcon. Second time we loop, loop through, we're going to uh, print out Luke, which is the key, gets around in there, value, which is land speeder, and so on and so forth. You get the picture. So I'm gonna print this. And you can see here we have Solo gets around in their Millennium Falcon, Luke gets around in their Land Speeder, and Boba Fett gets around in their Rocket Pack. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's uh, super straightforward, pretty simple, super useful. We'll be using we'll be using these a lot, I'm sure. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about, um, not related to these collections at all, is something called the while loop, right? And so how that looks, I'm going to create a variable here that is mutable, changeable. I'm going to say var x is <laughs> 10. And so what a while loop does is we have a condition that while, while it evaluates to true, we'll continue to run and loop through. So we're going to say while. And then here we have the conditions. So we're going to say while x is um, greater than 0, mm, okay. then we're going to print line. We're going to print out x. So x starts at 10. And while it's greater than 0, we're going to print out its value. But every time that we loop through, we're going to decrease the value of x by 1. All right, so that's what this x minus minus means. This is basically x is equal to x minus 1. Okay, so we're, if this was 10, we say 10 is equal to 10 minus 1, so now it's 9. And then the second time we loop through, uh, 9 is equal to 9 minus 1, so now it's 8. Uh, but the shorthand for that is minus minus. Um, the plus version of I will help if a. يا ولد ارس يا حمد منورين الستريم يا جماعه نورك ستريم ايه وانت الكمبيوتر بتاعك بيموت بتاع الكمبيوتر بتاعي مش بيموت ولا حاجه هو في هارد ديسك راح بس في هارد ديسك اختفى خلاص وين؟ اه والله انا هفتح بقى الكمبيوتر اشوف النظام بقى بص يا حاج كبس امر تعليقا على الستريم اه ماشي رقم واحد الشانل اسمها ابوتي جيمنج قشطة اه ماشي مشكلة اوكي عادي يعني مش حالك طيب البتاع يعني محطوط تحت كاتيجوري تيم فايت تاكتكس فعلا ما غيرتهاش اه اوكي ماشي وتحت كاتيجوري اكبر جيمنج فانت ماشي. يعني عندك زيرو تشانسز اوف ديسكفري قشطة ماشي بس غير كده لسه ما شفتش الفيديو نفسه اي آه. اوكي كو نيجي بقى للمشكلة امم ايه المشكلة؟ مش عارف اه ما انت ايه بقى ال كاسبيرسكي آه... زعلك ليه؟ لا مش كاسبيرسكي انا كنت فاكر ان في حاجة م... معطلة الكمبيوتر يعني آه... انت مش عارف تنزل كاسبيرسكي انا مش عارف انزل كاسبيرسكي فعلا اه يعني لو حد كاسبيرسكي ماشي سكاي ما... مش عارف تنزل كاسبيرسكي ليه؟ ما فيش بيقول لي ما فيش ما, ما فيش داونلود اهو باسورد مانجر طب الداونلود اي حاجه وخلاص خد تعالى هنا استنى بس وسع كده يا ابني مش هتعرف اللايسنس بتاع تاني فيرجن وات 
طيب تو شاريين انهي واحد يا جماعه؟ فور اللي هو انترنت حلم بيسو اللي هو الثاني تقريبا اللي في النص يا اقول انترنت سكيورتي اه طيب ماشي اتفضل يا عم اسمك ايه انت كبز نور انت ليه بيفتح بالانجليزي بالعربي؟ ما تعصبنيش عليك مش عايزه بالعربي لا اجهزه دي طب يعني لو قلت له سلاش اي ان هيفهمني طيب الحمد لله ماشي Uh, help me choose Windows Start Press Next Internet Security هو ده صح؟ ايوه ماشي طيب هو ده بيقول لي ان انا اشتريه مش ادونلوده ماشي على اكيد في حاجه اكتيفيت الكي اللي انا مديهولك فين؟ Somewhere على واتساب يعني هو انتوا شاريين يعني بتاع 20 20 ولا بتاع السنه الكام يا جماعه؟ اللي هو ليترلي اجدد واحد عندنا ما اعرفش ده كام قلت له انا عايز ابجريد قال لي ده الليتست اللي عندنا احنا استخدمناه عادي يا عقل ما فيش مشكله في البتاع اه ماشي هو ما فيهوش مشكله انا مش عارف اداونلوده اصلا يا جدعان امسك يا زباله هات حبيبي ايوه وانت بتعمل ايه خلي إيه؟ عندك فيروسز لدرجه ان فيها ما انا مش عارف هل هي فيروسز ولا هو الهارد ديسك اصلا كان فيه حاجه يعني بس هو مش بديهي ان هو يطير لوحده يعني يطير لوحده ده يعني انت يعني كميه الباد بلوكس اللي حضرتك مش عارف والله هو الهارد ديسك ده كان طالعين ميتين عامه بس ستيل يعني كان شغال دوس عليه فور فور بقى لا لا دوس دوس عليه مبروك ال ام جي تي 5 يا عم دوس بس انا خايف من كميه الحروف اللي في ال... يا عم ده انت متناك دوس دوس يا متناك دوس ثانك يو فور تشوزنج اور ادفانس مش عارف ايه بعتها داونلود فور بي سي بعتها هنا ولا بعتها يا خبر ابيض ده عامل داونلود فعلا يا خبر ابيض هر ابيض بيداونلود اتليست هو عمره ما كان بيداونلود قبل كده بيدور على الكيبا اللي فور فور كان بعته Fuck you, send it me. No. Oh, that's the one I'm. I don't know. 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 وبعدين يروح راميني يقول لي الدي ان اس مش شغال. انا اول لينك عندي في جوجل. ماشي يا عم بس خلي بالك اللينك اللي انت بعته لي ده دوت دوت يو كي. انا ممكن لو كنت فتحت اللي كان بيفتح معايا هنا يعني يقول لي لا والله مش افيلبل معاك وبتاع. انا فاكر ان هو كان بيعمل كده يعني. خد اكتب دي في جوجل. هات. زي ما هي كده. انا عارف نفس اللينك هنيكك. هيطلع له كاسبيرسكي دوت كوم يعني الفكره. اهو. أو فري ترايل مش عارف ايه اقول له انجلش داونلود ناو داونلود ناو برضو طيب اهو مرضيش لا ريدي اهو مرضيش ايه اي مش هيرضى ليه هو مش مصلحتهم ان انت ما تعرفش الداونلود برضو لا يا سيدي مالكش لا والله ما فيش سكيورتي طب انا هروح اكمل بس بقيه الليسون واجي لكم تاني To the uh, the value, so I'm gonna say x minus minus. So we're gonna loop through. The first time we loop through, um, we're gonna say is 10 greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we're gonna print out 10. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna subtract one from 10. So now it's gonna be nine. So is nine greater than zero? Yes, it is. Print it out. And we're gonna keep doing that until this condition no longer evaluates to true. All right. So let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. So if all goes according to plan, we should print out uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that is uh, that's pretty much it. If we wanted to, we could change this to x is equal to zero. And while x is less than, oops, we could say less than or equal to 10. And we could go plus plus. All right, so it's pretty much just the opposite. We're going to be starting at zero, and our condition is now while x is less than or equal to 10. And then we're going to run that. So now it should go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, my fish and a 4, yeah, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, and so that's a, that's a your four loop that you use for array list. Uh, and then um, a variable name for the array list. Uh, and then we're going to use the array list. And then we're going to use the array list. And then we're going to use the array list. And then we're going to use the array list. And then we're going to use the array list. And then we're going to use the array list. And then we're going to use the array list.
And then for hash maps, you can either access uh, one or both, or one or the other or both, using um, this right here. And then you can do whatever you need to do with it. And then we have our while loops, which um, while a condition evaluates to true, then you can uh, continue to do something until that condition no longer evaluates to true. All right, so super useful stuff that we'll be using a lot. And I hope you guys are enjoying this and having fun. I know that I am, and I'll see you all in the next one. اللسن اللي جاي هيبقى فيه النولابيليتي ودي مهمة فشخة في كوتلن لأن هو يعني من الحاجات الجميلة هو بيهندلها كلاسز وإنهيرتنس جميل وإكسرسايز واللامدا لامدا أوبريشن طيب ماشي سيو إن ذا نكست ون سلام